Hello everyone, welcome to the Oyster Mushroom Expert channel. In our last video, we talked about why mushrooms turn yellow when the weather suddenly gets colder. You can find the link to that video in the description below. Today, we'll take a look at the same grow room and discuss how to improve growing conditions if you only have an exhaust fan and fresh air comes in passively through holes in the walls. The grow room in this video is located in Turkey in a region where winter temperatures rarely drop below 6 degrees Celsius at night, about 43 degrees Fahrenheit. During the day, the weather is quite comfortable for oyster mushrooms, typically around 12 to 16 degrees Celsius or 44 to 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a photo of the previous harvest from this grow room. As you can see, the mushrooms are quite beautiful. There are a lot of them and they all grew at the same time. The mushrooms were wet because they were recently sprayed with water, but this didn't harm them. This shows that a minimal setup like this can work well in this climate. The only exception is when the temperature suddenly drops right at the worst possible moment during pin formation. So what can you do in such cases? I have five useful tips. Today we'll go over the first four. The fifth tip will be in a separate video about heating the growing room. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Let's get started. First tip, choose a strain that can handle the temperature and humidity fluctuations. There is no strain that is completely unaffected by climate changes, but some are more sensitive than others. Delicate strains will deform or develop bacterial blotch under conditions that hardier strains can tolerate. In this case, the grower was using strain P80. This is a hybrid oyster mushroom. It's hard to say if another strain would have survived misting at 8 degrees Celsius, 46 degrees Fahrenheit, but P80 definitely did not handle it well. The official website of Talspong, the company that developed and produces this strain, clearly states that it requires a growing temperature of 16 to 17 degrees Celsius or 61 to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, the drop to 8 degrees was not good for it. Second tip. If the incubation period is over and you want to bring down the temperature in the growing room, look at the weather forecast first. If there's a sudden cold snap expected in the next couple of days, don't start lowering the temperature today. Wait until tomorrow so the substrate retains more heat. That way, pinning will happen more evenly. However, the temperature must be lowered gradually. If it drops too quickly, the humidity will spike uncontrollably and condensation will form on the pins, killing them due to suffocation. This is especially dangerous if you start lowering the temperature after pinning has already begun. So what can you do in this situation? I recommend installing additional small exhaust fans on the same wall as your main exhaust fan. The ideal height for these fans depends on your shelving. They should be placed at the same level as the top shelf, directly across from the aisle between your shelves. You don't need anything expensive, just low-powered axial fans. They usually cost around 10 to 20 US dollars and can move about 150 to 300 cubic meters of air per hour, which is roughly 90 to 175 cubic feet per minute. Why do you need additional exhaust fans? When the pins first appear, the mushrooms don't need a lot of fresh air. But if the room is too warm, you have to turn on the exhaust fan to cool it down. Many growers in this situation turn the exhaust fan on for a short time. For example, on for one minute, then off for 10 minutes. As a result, the temperature will drop in sudden jumps. Small exhaust fans use very little electricity, only 20 or 30 watts per hour, so you can leave them running all the time. They will remove a small amount of the room air and cool fresh air will gradually enter through the openings in the opposite wall. This allows for a more even cooling. It's best to place humidifiers near these openings. I'll talk about this a bit later. 
when the mushrooms grow to about one to two centimeters, about half an inch in diameter, you need to watch their stems. If the stems start stretching out, that means the mushrooms need more fresh air. At this point, you can start turning on the main exhaust fan periodically. Meanwhile, the two small fans should be kept running continuously. This method is only suitable for small growing rooms, no larger than 8 to 10 meters, 26 to 33 feet. In larger rooms, you'll need ducts to distribute the air evenly. Of course, the most reliable option is a full ventilation system with ducts, heating, humidification, and if needed, cooling. This keeps the climate stable regardless of the weather. There's a link to a video about just such a ventilation system in the description below. Now the fourth tip, humidity control. Oyster mushrooms are very sensitive to humidity fluctuations. This is probably their biggest weakness. Oyster mushrooms suffer from both a lack and excess of moisture. You can find a video about this in the playlist, Problems of Growing Oyster Mushrooms. If humidification is controlled by a timer, humidity levels will fluctuate. If you spray water manually once a day, these fluctuations will be even more extreme. But if the outdoor humidity is around 75 to 80 percent and the temperature is between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius or 50 to 60 Fahrenheit, there won't be major fluctuations in humidity and the mushrooms will grow well. If you missed your mushrooms manually or use foggers and haven't had any problems, you can continue as usual. However, if primordia frequently die or develop spots, especially in winter, you might want to try a different approach. In the next video, I'll explain how to maintain proper humidity and how to heat your growing room without harming the mushrooms. That's all for today. Much love. We will see you next time.